Okay, let's do assignment two, or unit three, or vectors. Uh, we're going to do the vector conversion worksheet. Okay, now uh, let's talk about position vectors on an xy plane. What we're going to do today will apply to all vectors, whether it's velocity, acceleration, force, all kinds of different things. But we're going to we're going to start off by just talking about position vectors. So this is my x-axis in meters. This is my y-axis in meters. So, um, and let's say my object is located over here somewhere. What we need is a way of expressing where that object is on the xy plane. Where is it? Where is it located with respect to the origin? We have a word for that. What do we call where something is compared to the origin? Well, we call that position. So what is the position of this object? Well, there's two ways of expressing that. First of all, I can express it with a distance and an angle. Like, how far away is it from the origin? What, what distance is it away from the origin? OK, I'm going to call that R. And then it's going to have an angle. And we need to have a reference for where we're going to measure our angles from. We're going to measure the angles from the positive x-axis, always. And we're going to rotate. If I rotate counterclockwise, I'm going to call that a positive angle. If I rotate clockwise like this, I'm going to call it a negative angle. But in any case, the angle will always be measured from the positive x-axis. So there are two ways of expressing this. Um, where this object is with respect to the origin, I can use what are called polar coordinates. Or I can use what are called rectangular coordinates. And what we want to do is define what these are and then I want to be able to go back and forth between them. I want to be able to convert from polar to rectangular and rectangular to polar coordinates and that's what we're going to do today. Polar coordinates, here I have vector r, that is position vector r, that's position vector r. In polar coordinates I'm going to say r is a distance away from the origin or a magnitude, how far away it is, and in what direction is it? R and theta. Now, this, if I give you an R and a theta, I've, I've given you the polar coordinate for the position, the polar coordinates. Now, notice, though, that I can also tell you where is this object along the x-axis and where is this object along the y-axis? So r sub x and r sub y. Now if you express the position of this object using how far you, along you are on, in, in the x-direction and how far up you, or down you are in the y-direction, um, these are rectangular coordinates. And by the way, this is called the x component of vector r. And this is called the y component. We have two component vectors. We've broken the one vector up into two other vectors, the x component and the y component. So I would say vector r here is equal to r sub x and r sub y. Now what we want to do is uh, we want, what if, what if I give you the x components 
and I want to calculate what the polar coordinates are. Well, I use just what we did in the last uh, assignment. If I give you Rx and Ry, and I want to express R and theta, I would use this. R equals the square root of Rx squared plus Ry squared. That is, I just used Pythagorean theorem. Now, if I want to use, if I want to calculate the angle theta, well, I know Ry and Rx. I know the ratio of y over x is uh, tangent. So what I can do to get the angle is use inverse tangent. Ry over Rx to get the angle. Now, I'm going to add something to this. And I'm going to show you why we're going to add it here in, in a minute. But I'm going to add plus 180 degrees if Rx is negative. If it, it turns out that if your x component of your vector is negative, when you use inverse tangent, you have to add 180 degrees to the answer your calculator gives you. And I'm going to show you why in a few minutes. Now, to use uh, for rectangular coordinates, uh, it's pretty easy. Uh, if you're given r and theta and you want to find rx, you just say rx is equal to r cosine theta and ry is equal to r sine theta. So, And there's no tricks or anything to worry about here. You just plug in the angle it's given, you know, times cosine, or I mean, you, you operate cosine on the angle and multiply it by r, and you've got r sub x. r sub y is, you know, the, mag, the r times sine theta. Yes? Oh, whoops. Thank you. So this is what you need to go from rectangular to polar. This is what you need to go from polar to rectangular. And what I'm going to show you in the next video is why do we have to add 180 degrees if Rx, R sub x is negative?